up? Welcome to Monster Art Monday. I'm your host, Sean D. Skellington. Every week, I'm here for you painting and telling the stories and tales of monsters, whether they be mythological, movie, or real life. Every once in a great fucking while, I will have a guest uh, narrator or a guest artist. What's up, guys? <laughs> This is uh, Zachary Jones. He is a abstract portrait artist and one of the founding members of the Goon Squad. What are we going to paint today? We're going to paint the Wolfman. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into some Wolfman. Yeah, disclaimer, this is definitely Wolfman, not Werewolf. You may be thinking, Sean, what is the difference between a Werewolf and a Wolfman? Well, a Wolfman is more man than wolf. A werewolf is more wolf than man. The character of the Wolfman was created by German novelist and screenwriter Kurt Siomak. Did I pronounce that right? The character debuted in the 1941 Universal film The Wolfman. It starred Lon Chaney Jr and was directed by George Wagner, written by Kurt Seidelmack. Now this, now this wasn't the first uh, werewolf film. Again, this is the first Wolfman, but the first werewolf film was actually in 1938 and was called Werewolf of London. Werewolf of London wasn't very commercially successful, though owned and distributed by Universal. And some of you out there may say, well, I Googled the first Wolfman film and there's actually a 1924 silent film called The Wolfman. Well, that's bullshit because that movie is actually a murder mystery love triangle movie. It has nothing to do with actual Wolfman or werewolves at all. In the 1941 film, The Wolfman, Lon Chaney Jr. plays Larry Talbot. He's a man who is cursed, and when the moon shines, he becomes the Wolfman. This at the time was an iconic role, and struck at the heart of the American moviegoers. Lon Chaney Jr. would go on to reprise this role five times. Five times. Boom. Two years after The Wolfman, he would reprise the role in Frankenstein Meets the Werewolf in 1943. The following year, 1944, House of Frankenstein. 1945, House of Dracula. And he would don the Wolfman role one last time in 1948 in the film Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. But it would not be the last time he played a werewolf. The very last time he would play a werewolf would be in a movie in 1964 called Face of the Screaming Werewolf, where Lon Chaney Jr. would play a mummified werewolf, which a lot of people like to believe was like the crossover of like the dead wolfman, but it's not affiliated. With the creation of Kurt Saddlemack's character and the interpretation of that character by Lon Chaney Jr. This would go on to spark tons and tons of werewolf movies, including a remake of the one of the originals, Werewolves of London, Werewolf of London, which would later go on to be commercially successful. There has been toys, video games, comic books, movies, merchandise, you name it. I've probably bought it. Pretty rad how a a person's creation and a person's interpretation of that creation would become timeless and so inspiring. As the years would go on, a lot of filmmakers would move away from the actual Wolfman look and go more for the more wolf than man look. Um, But it would spark huge franchises such as Underworld, Teen Wolf, like all that kind of stuff. They would go on to uh, remake, I guess you could say remake, the Wolfman movies 
once in 1979 with a movie just called Wolfman, and in 2010, uh, a movie called The Wolfman with Anthony Hopkins. But worldwide at the time of filming this, over 155, 155 movies worldwide have featured a werewolf in their movie whether it be a cartoon film, an actual horror film, a comedy, whatever, 155. Pretty rad. Out of those 155 movies, my favorite interpretation or retelling or inspiring, inspired character would be from the 1987 film Monster Squad, which I've talked about a bunch of times, but the werewolf, Wolfman, in that film, spot on. All right, guys, if you like this and you want to go down a rabbit hole, I also do a lot of other things. I have a podcast called Necroelectric. I have a band called Last Nail in the Coffin. I host a art contest called Paintbrush Social Club. And if you're ever in Waco, Texas, stop by our store, Skellington Curiosities. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the story. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Zachary Jones's badass art. Maybe. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. Where can they find you, Zach? At Zach James Jones Art. Also, check out the Goon Squad on Instagram. I believe it's Goon Squad, Goon Squad Wake Up. Boom. All right, guys. Till next time.